And this week, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the home study. We had a wonderful conversation last week in the Adoption Roadmap Facebook group. If you're a hopeful parent, that Facebook group is for you, um, where I brought in a home study supervisor from an agency in Chicago that we've done a lot of work with. And it was really, we dug in deep and answered a lot of the questions I get very often. Um, so if you're in that group and you didn't catch it, go watch it. If you're a hopeful parent and you're just starting your journey or thinking about it, go join the Adoption Roadmap and watch that conversation I had with Teresa Bernou. And today in our email, I sent out the four questions that you need to ask to find the right home study agency for you. I'm getting all these texts coming in. This always happens every time I go live, like I get phone calls and texts. Anyhow, so go check those things out if, if you're just starting the process. So for the home study, the home study is the legal process that you need to go through to even be approved to be able to adopt a baby. And it's also a great way if you haven't done the mental preparation that we talked about last week, this is a good way to start that because your home study agency and your caseworker is going to start diving into some of these deeper issues like wh who's your support system? Um, what are you open to? What are your criteria? And are you really prepared for that? Have you done the work? You have to, in many states, there is an educational requirement. I wish there was an educational requirement in every state so that you could can really dig into some of the topics like transracial adoption, drug exposure, um, all the things to make sure that you're prepared and you've done the work and you know what to expect moving forward and you know what you're open to because you're gonna see things that might surprise you during during your adoption journey. And so the home study process really helps to set that educational foundation, but it is really just a very basic education and a very basic foundation. I encourage you to dive deeper and that's up to you, whether it's working with a consultant and really asking some hard questions. For us, education is a top priority. So we're, we are constantly doing things like this. And in our groups, we dive a lot deeper there are classes out there the adoption learning partners is one online where you can get some online classes and there are others so if your agency doesn't provide educational classes in person is always the best but obviously that's not happening these days then go seek it out yourself facebook is a great opportunity same with um, instagram for following different um, parts of the adoption constellation the adoptee the birth mom and the adoptive parent to get different views. So I encourage you to do that. You're gonna to need to get fingerprints. So there's a whole background check through your local DCFS, Department of Child and Family Services to make sure that you don't have a sorted background that someone needs to be aware of. But on that point, like if you had a DUI 10 years ago or 15 years ago, or when you were a teenager, that does not preclude you from adopting. We're probably gonna ask you about that do not hide anything because it will come up. Oh my gosh, I had a client years and years and years ago who was so scared to say anything about suffering with anxiety or depression or whatever it was, I can't even remember, and being on medication and seeing a therapist that they didn't mention it in their first, um, I think they actually lied about it because they were so scared it was gonna take them off the, you know, list to be able to adopt and they told me thankfully they had the you know it was bothering them enough to tell me what they did and i was like ah now you gotta backpedal and go back to them and tell them why you did that and how nervous you were and actually this is what it is so if you are seeing a therapist not to worry frankly you probably should be if you're not <laughs> and if you're starting the adoption process i recommend everybody see an adoption competent therapist because you have fears and you have things that scare you or that you're not you don't even know might trigger you and it's great to have somebody in your back pocket for that so you'll need background checks you need you'll need a physical from your doctor 
Um, so you're going to need to go get those done and your doctor's going to need to sign off to say, yes, this is a healthy person. They, there shouldn't be any issues as to why they couldn't parent. And same with the therapist, or if you're seeing any sort of specialist, they will need to do the same thing. Somebody has asked me, you know, I've had people who are cancer survivors, just because you're a cancer survivor doesn't preclude you from adopting. But again, you'll probably need a sign off from your oncologist saying that your day-to-day -day life and, and your expectancy is, is good and, and there's no reason why you shouldn't bear it. So be honest, be open. If you had any abuse growing up, be honest and be open. They're gonna talk you through that. They wanna make sure that you have, that they are placing children into safe situations. So it's nothing to be worried about when they come into your home. They are not looking for your home to be totally spotless. Nobody's totally spotless. So don't feel like you have to clean every space in your house. If you need an excuse to do so, by all means, go ahead, go for it. But you do not need to do that. You don't need to like candles or bacon apple pie or anything like that. Don't worry. There are people, I love when Teresa said on our on a, my interview, she's like, I'm a person too, I'm a human being too, I am messy, I have you know, things that happen. So don't worry about that piece. If you have a dog, make sure your dog is there when they do the home, home visit. If you're locking them up and not letting them come out or, um, I don't know, like if something's fishy, they're gonna question that, but dogs are fine. Um, you might need pet insurance, I'm not, positive on that but um dogs are fine if you have a swimming pool they'll just want to make sure that it's it's either gated or precautions are around it maybe it's a locked gate so a child can't get into it so these are the types of things that they're going to be talking you through and even if you don't have it done yet they'll tell you how to do it they want you to be able to move forward so i don't want you to be scared about the home study process so a huge part of the home study process is like a stack of paperwork this big. I mean, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's a lot of paperwork. That's the piece that you can control. If you want to know, well, how long is it going to take? Well, a lot of that has to do with how long it's going to take you to get all your things done. Getting that doctor's appointment, getting your background checks, filling out all the paperwork with all your financials. And by the way, make copies of everything because you're going to need it if you apply to other agencies. Keep copies of everything. So a lot of it depends on how, how long it takes you to go through that. And then I'd say an average is about six to eight weeks. Once you turn in all your paperwork for them to schedule their home study visit, to write it up, all of that. So plan on that. And one of the good things is while you're waiting after you turn in your paperwork, that's when you can be starting to work on your profile. So that's a really good timing hack because the last thing you want is for a home study to be done and you have no profile to show. So you're ready to adopt, but you can't because you have nothing to show an expectant mom. And home studies are typically only good for a year, so you don't want to waste that time. So there's a little hack for you right there. Work on that profile after you turn in your paperwork. That's all I've got today. Bye guys.